Hello everyone, Glenda Mollett here and I'm in my craft room with you stamping this morning. I have a beautiful prize peony card that I'm going to share with you and I hope you will enjoy the process of creating this card. Trying something a little different, showing my face first and then I'll flip over to my desk view and we'll get going. So welcome to my craft room. There we go. All right. So this is this is the the card. It's I used the prize peony stamp set and die, and the peony dies along with the new simply elegant specialty designer paper. This paper is so pretty. It has gold, silver and copper foiling on every single sheet but only on one side of the sheet. So if you don't want to use the foiling, just flip it over and use the non-foiled side. Just making sure that it's looking good over there in YouTube land and we'll get going. So the recipe I'm going to use for this card, I have an envelope, of course, a thick basic white card base. They use standard eight and a half by five and a half. The, and on the inside, I have a five and a quarter by four inch piece of basic white, and I'll show you what the inside looks like. I never send out my cards naked. I figure they're naked if there is not an extra piece on the inside and some kind of stamping or designer paper or something added to it. And I also customize the envelope because nobody wants to see a naked inside or envelope. I know it's weird, but that's the way I am. Okay, so on the front, I'm going to put a piece of um, copper foil. It's five and a quarter by four. And then I'm going to cut this layer out of the center of it. So you don't waste that whole piece of, of foiling. Simply Elegant Designer Paper is five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. So that's going to layer right on top of that. A piece of basic white three and a half by three and three quarters to do the peony. No, three and a half by four and a half to do the peony and two and a half by three and three quarters to do the die cut. Now, I don't know whether you can see on here, but I've used the stitched greenery die in the background. It's just another alternative. Instead of embossing, um, you can use the stitched greenery die to add a little bit of texture to your background. And this is a piece of pale papaya that's one by four to put the um, the sentiment on. So this is the stitched greenery die. It's one entire die and it's big enough that if you wanted, and I've done this, you can even put it onto your envelope. It fits the entire envelope with spare all the way around. So you don't have to be too precise of where you put your paper in the die. I love that part of it. So that's stitched greenery. I'm going to use the stitched rectangle dies, number four and five, and I count from the center out. So I'm going to use these two, one for the copper and one for the white before I use the stitched greenery die on it. Okay, so let me get myself organized here. The prize peony used to come in a bundle, but of course it's been around a while, so it's no longer bundled but you can still get both pieces, the prize peony stamp set and the matching peony dies. Now these are the dies that will you can create a 3D peony flower with. There's four pieces, four pieces to it. I don't see the other one on top, off the top. There's one, two, three. Yeah, there's, there's this one. Um, so I'm going to use this die to cut out the entire stamp image. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to color with Stampin' Blends. I've pulled out the pale papaya and soft sea foam because I like the nice, with it, I like the nice muted colors. With this stamp set, I tend to use the, um, the muted colors. And I don't know why, because, um, Peonies are usually bright, like bright red and deep burgundy. Thanks, Shanna. Okay, 
sorry about that. I'm going to take my white piece that is two and a half by three and three quarters, and I'm going to die cut number four stitched rectangle using my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. So I'll just quickly run this through. Now I, I'm going to show you a little trick. If you're using something that has a flat edge like this, it's really difficult sometimes for your machine when it hits that full on to pop up and go over it. So if you just angle it just a tiny bit, then it's going to hit your corner and it's a smoother transition. And you won't hear that popping and cracking and carrying on. All right. There we go. So I've die cut that. Put my my die out of the way here. Now I'm going to take the stitched greenery die. I'm going to lay this right side down on the greenery die and I'm going to do the same thing when I put it in my machine. I'm going to angle it slightly so it hits a corner. And I don't have to worry about um, where that piece of paper is sitting in the die because there's no directionality to this die and it's got lots of space around the outside to um, so you won't miss. And then when you flip it over, there's lots of holes in here just to pop it out because it does get stuck in those stitch marks. So there we go. There's the embossed die cut. Um, Whisper white piece. All right, so now I'm going to take my copper layer that is five and a quarter by four, and I'm going to die cut uh, number five stitched rectangle out of this. Once again, putting it in my machine so it goes in crooked. It took me a very long time to train myself to do to cut holes in my layers. I was always afraid that people would know that it's not a solid layer underneath there. There we go. So that's cut. So I have those pieces and those pieces. Time to do some stamping. <clears throat> so I have the prize peony stamp, the big one, and I'm going to stamp it in Sahara sand because I wanted it. I didn't want to have a dark outline on the flower. I want to have more of a muted um, outline for it because I'm using the muted color. So I'm just inking it up in Sahara sand. Check it, make sure I got it all inked. And I'm going to stamp it onto my white piece. And give it time to transfer the ink. There we go. And of course, it will dry lighter than that. Something is going on with my computer. It's flashing things. I don't know it. Sometimes social or technology is not my friend. All right. So now I'm going to take my Stampin' Blends and I'm going to color it. Now, this stamp has all of these beautiful um, markings on it. So, although it's big, it doesn't take long to color because you don't have to do any shading if you don't want to. You can just put a layer of color down there and carry on. And you don't have to be precise that you're staying within the lines of each petal. I love this stamp. Now you could even use the other side because that gives you much greater ink coverage when you're doing a big area like this. Uh oh, I think my stamp and blend is running out of ink. I've used this one so much. Oh dear, and I just put an order in and didn't order one. Oh, well. 
I'll have another order going in soon, I'm sure. There we go. I don't typically use this end of my Stampin' Blends because I like having more precise control over where the ink goes. But when you have such a big area and you're only putting one color on it, it's good. There we go. Now we'll do the, the bud as well. I find that the tip just doesn't give me precise for the edges. So you can always do your inside and then go back with the bullet tip and just fill in right out to the very edge of each one. Like that, there we go. Now, if you wanted, let me put that there so I remember. If you wanted, I've gone back in with a little bit of the dark just to add um, a center and a little bit of color onto the bud because buds are usually a bit darker. Light one, go over the top of it again just to blend it all in. But that step's not necessary. There we go. Okay, now. Holy man, what is going on? I hope you guys are not having issues watching because I don't know what's going on with my computer. Things are opening when I don't want them opening. This is soft sea foam, and I'm just going to do the leaves the same way. Now, they also have a lot of lines on there. The artist has put um, the shadow lines in so that you don't have to be too precise with this either. You don't have to um, add a lot of shading if you don't want to. When I first got this stamp set, I took the um, various colors and colored it in a whole bunch of different colors and it was so pretty. I think I used rich razzleberry and cherry cobbler. And I think I did a yellow one. I don't even know if there is any such thing as a yellow peony. I will have to check that out. I might have just used creative license. There we go. Now, if I wanted. Oh, good. Thanks, Shanna. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. You can go back in and just add a, the line down the middle of the leaves if you wanted. Maybe a little there. Pop back in with the, the light one. And just blend that all in. Us usually, I um, die cut this first. And then color it. Because I can't tell you how many times I've colored something. And then gone to die cut it. And it's moved. And I had to redo the whole thing. Okay, so I'm just lining this up. Right like that. And then I've got some pieces of post-it notes that I'm just going to use to hold it in place. Maybe it won't travel while I'm trying to get a die cut. I found these new post-it notes uh, in Walmart. They have post-it sticky all over the entire thing, except for right here. There's a, about a, an eighth of an inch where there's no sticky so that you can separate them. But they're sticky over the whole thing. So exciting. You know your life is centered around stamping when post-it notes make you happy. Okay, so I'm just running this through my machine. And we'll give that a quick die cut. Off. Oh, good. It actually cut properly. Yay. 
I don't know about you, but I kind of hold my breath when I'm um, popping things out like that, because sometimes it, I don't get it centered, but I did a really good job on this one. Okay, now I have to, I completely forgot that I have to cut the sentiment out. So I'm using this one of the um, stitch rectangle dies, but you'll see, oh no, I thought I cut it down, but I didn't. I just made it this, the entire size, but you can make it shorter. So I'm happy to show you how to do that. First of all, cut this out. Just whipping it through. Now I'll stamp my sentiment on here. And I have happy birthday. And this is from the art gallery stamp set. I really like, I like the, the clean lines of this sentiment um, compared to the, the whimsical flower. So I'm inking up in memento ink and I'm going to stamp, except my, I'm going to get my head in the way here. I'm going to stamp it to one side. Oops, didn't get a good clean stamp, but that's okay. You get the idea. Now I want to cut this off so that it matches that. So I'm taking my die and I'm going to put it approximately where I want it and line it up. And then I hold the paper and I move the die till I feel it pop down into the stitch mark. Now, when I run this through, I'm just putting tape on here so it doesn't move. When I run this through, I'm only going to run it through part. So I'm going to put this on here like that. And I only, I'm only going to put my top plate on that much of it so that it only cuts that and doesn't cut out the rest of it. And I'll run that through You have to hold your plate that pops out the other side because it will pop and you'll end up with it on the floor. Okay, so now when you pop this out, see it's made it a little bit smaller. You've cut off that much of it. So you can do this with any die that you can line up like that. Okay, pieces are done. Let's stamp the envelope and the inside piece, and then we can do some assembly. And I'm using um, the medium sized image on this and pale papaya ink so that it matches the colors that I've used. Now I do have to get one of my dirty papers out so I don't stamp on my, my mat here. So I apologize, this is one of the, the dirtier ones. And I'm just going to stamp down in the bottom corner here. Rub it, make sure I get good ink transfer. And we'll do the same thing to the envelope. Hey, and you know what I'm going to do? Oh, wouldn't that be fun? I'm going to use that. I just, I just had an aha moment. I love it when these things pop into my head and it's like, really? Why didn't I think of doing that before? I'm going to take the envelope and I'm going to take the die and I'm going to, I'm going to die. I'm going to stitch emboss the flap of the envelope. So I'm just opening it up. I've lined it up right on the edge there. Pieces of, I don't want to put this down until I get some post-it note on here to hold it in place there. So I'm going to run this through the machine now and I'm going to emboss the top half of the envelope. Let's see if this is going to work. Because you know, sometimes it's a good idea to have this work. Or this one should. Okay, but I can't put the die sideways this time. And 
a little bit more difficult to whip it through the machine. There we go. Hold on. Ooh, look at that. Oh, isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness. Okay, that's a bonus I didn't know was going to happen today. Look at this. Stunning. So I've done the entire envelope a couple of times and it really works well. Um, it sticks it together so you just have to put your hand in and separate it all. But I'm impressed. Okay. Calm down. You know what I did? Look at this. Look what I did. The card is oriented this way, not this way. So now I have to stamp another one. I was so excited about thinking about the envelope. Well, 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 sometimes things work. Sometimes the brain just doesn't function. It's okay. I can restamp it on the other side. That's why there's two sides of a piece of paper. All right, card base. And this is going to go, and then that's going to go. So let's attach this designer paper. Come on. This is almost to the end. <laughs> they get a little ornery when they get to the end. I don't want to start. All right, I have my silicone mat here at the ready. Okay, I'm going to layer this onto this one. Look at that. And then we'll put this. Let me check something. No. All good. Okay, so I'm going to layer this onto my card front. need to put a little bit in that corner I missed it okay so this is going to go on the card front hopefully straight there we go perfect okay now the stitched white piece is going to go onto the copper piece So are you guys going to have a warm day where you are, or is it cool? I think we're in for a hot one here where I live. And we've got a fire bug in town that's been setting fires in one of our local parks. And there's been eight of them over the past couple of weeks, and they haven't been able to catch them yet. So I'm hoping that they... Find out who this dude is. Now, I don't know. I can't say that it's a he or a she because I don't know. Or a they. But man alive, they need to stop setting fires. Okay, so this one gets centered on here like that. Okay, I'm not going to push it down till I look and make sure it's kind of straight-ish. There we go. Peony goes up on dimensionals. Oops, I just dropped a sheet of dimensionals on the floor. And I like to use enough that, that it doesn't cave in anywhere. Scissors. And the piece down here. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to put that on the card front. Get rid of the, the liners. And I'm going to kind of Let's see, I don't want to angle it too much. 
but I want to angle it enough that it has interest and I want to be up high enough enough that I can put that sentiment on there. So maybe I should put the sentiment on first. Let's just do that. Then I'll know exactly where I can put it. A couple of dimensionals. Oops, this one's over too far. So it's going to be hanging over top of um, a couple of layers there and I don't want it to be pulled down. So I'm going to kind of figure out where I want it and I'll just put that one right there so that it hits the same height as the other one does. I'm kind of anal that way about having my my things not curve be pulled down because see if I put a dimensional there it would pull it down because there's two heights difference. Getting a few tips from today. That's kind of cool. Okay, this will just just maybe slide under there. I'll bring that flower up. And right there looks good to me. And with this paper, with all the foiling, you don't even have to add any bling or anything because it's got bling built into the paper. It's really cool. But I could, I could add some um, champagne rhinestones to this because they're kind of the same color as the pale papaya. So this is the inside piece. I'll just now you can sponge around the inside if you want going white on white or I sometimes I take the marker and go around the outside but other times I like just the plain white on white on the inside so let me find my champagne rhinestones and I will add a couple to this card because I can and we've got time I love these. These are uh, one of my very favorite embellishments. Oh, speaking of which, I have a contest happening over in my VIP group. Tell me what your favorite embellishment is, and I will put your name in a draw for a package of resin hearts. I put two on, and then I have an issue. Like, where do I put the third one? I can't put it there because you won't see it. And I like to do kind of like a triangle, but I don't like having things exactly in line. So if I put this one here, then maybe I'll have to move that one over a bit. That'll work. There we go. So there's the champagne rhinestones on there. So there's our card. Is that not beautiful? Oh, I like the champagne rhinestones. I will add them to the original one too because for some reason it just finishes the card off, you know? I'm, I can't, doing a card without bling is like having bread without butter. Yeah, I'm gonna end up with the same issue, but that's okay. I'm just gonna let it go this time. I'll just put that one right there. Nope, don't like that. Oh my goodness, I don't like that. Okay, right there it is. So I hope you enjoyed the card today. It just shows you how beautiful, how you can make beautiful cards just using designer paper and one stamped image. Sometimes it's nice to have all the layers and the stamping and the techniques and the embellishments and ribbons and stuff and sometimes it's nice to make a card that's just a little bit simpler so let me go to my face view again i'll just take this out of the way so i'm not get, it's not in my face and thank you so much for spending time with me in my craft room today i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day stamping smiles and bye